Welcome to Birmingham Unitarian Church. I am Teresa Honnold, your worship associate on this beautiful first Sunday of spring. I am joined in worship leadership by our co-directors of music ministry, Abha and Stephen Deering, RE coordinator, Nico Van Ostrand, and worship participants, Eddie and Zeke Dell, Amy Smalley, and Nathan Schreck. We also have technical support from our communications coordinator, Sarah Constantakis, and Zoom greeter, Jane O'Neill. BUC is a Unitarian Universalist congregation in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. Even in our virtual format, we are a thriving community with a place for everyone. Social justice is an essential com component of our church life. We are a green sanctuary congregation designation we've earned through our dedication to caring for our planet. Our social justice work this year is focused on environmental action, economic inequality, civic engagement, and racial inequality. We are also a capital W welcoming congregation, which we celebrate today as Daffodil Sunday. Our worship services are hosted on Zoom every Sunday morning at 1030 and then later posted on our website and on our Facebook page. After the service, we invite you to stay for virtual coffee hour. If you are worshiping with us for the first time today, we expand, extend a special welcome to you. We have three announcements today. How green can you go? Most of us have already incorporated certain habits into our routine to lighten our load on the planet. Here's a chance to dig a little deeper, talk with other BUCers, and find more ways to lower your home and personal carbon footprint. The BUC Environmental Action Group invites you to participate in How Green Can You Go? We will examine a carbon footprint calculator, compare notes on what we found, and consider more earth-friendly actions we might take now. Join our meeting this Thursday, March 25th at 7 p.m. Zoom information is available on the BUC calendar and on the BUC community Facebook page. We are all in this climate crisis together. Let's work together to find our way out. Do you know about the Sunday Discussion Group? This thoughtful and engaging group meets every Sunday afternoon at 3 p.m and they are always eager for new participants. Weekly discussion topics are decided by majority vote. In April and May, there will be a two-part book discussion. Zoom access information is on the BUC website calendar. The stewardship campaign is underway for the upcoming fiscal year. Stewardship takes many forms and we build love in this community in many ways. However, we cannot ignore that we need financial support to sustain our facilities and staff and to engage in our events, programs, and worship activities. Pledge commitments are an essential part of BUC's planning. Based on pledges, the Board of Trustees will approve a final budget and present it at the annual meeting in May. This year's pledge goal is $565,000 or a 1.8% increase, which is basically a cost of living increase. Together, let's celebrate all that our church community means to us during the best and worst of times by ensuring that we maintain financial health to support all that we do. And be sure to check out the BUC Facebook page every Wednesday for a live pledge goal progress update from stewardship team member Brian Shandoval, please do your part by pledging before April 1st. Thank you for joining this morning or whenever you're watching this. Although we are not together physically, we are together in spirit and it is good to be together again. And now our service will begin. This morning's prelude is in light of the recent holiday, St. Patrick's Day. And uh, especially for all of those Irish at heart and Irish, it's a slip jig called Spout of the Dew, arranged by David Russell. <laughs> Thank you. 
We light this flame to ignite our hearts and minds, the spark of knowledge that enlightens, the shimmering hope that burns, the blazing love that engulfs our actions, the bonfire of our commitment. We light this flame for those who celebrate themselves, who fear, who hope, who persevere, who stand on the side of love for all. I am Alice Price and I am going to be singing Woya. I mean, I am going to be leading Woya on number 1020. <laughs> Our opening words this morning were written by Reverend Margaret Weiss entitled, The Church Has Left the Building. The church is not a place, it is a people. The church is not only a steeple above the tree line, streets and cars, Rather, it is a people proclaiming to the world that we are here for the work of healing and justice. The church is not walls built stone upon stone, held together by mortar, but rather person linked with person, linked with person. All ages and genders and abilities, a community 
built on the foundation of reason, faith, and love. The church is not just a set of doors open on a Sunday morning, but the commitment day after day and moment after moment of our hearts creaking open the doors of welcome to the possibility of new experiences and radical welcome. The church is not simply a building, a steeple, a pew. The church is the gathering together of all people and experiences and fear and love and hope in our resilient hearts, gathering however we can to say to the world, welcome, come in, lay down your heartache and pick up hope and love. For the church is us, each and every one of us, together a beacon of hope in this world that so sorely needs it. The mission of the Birmingham Unitarian Church is to create a free and welcoming religious community that encourages lives of integrity, learning, service, and joy. The weekly offering serves as an ongoing reminder of this mission. And to repeat Margaret Weiss, for the church is us, each and every one of us, together a beacon of hope in this world that so sorely needs it. So let there be an offering in support of this beloved community and our good works. Contributions can be made through our website using Venmo, username BUCMI, excuse me, username at BUCMI, or by sending a check in the mail. However you choose to give, please do so with an open heart for each other. In the musical theater production of A Man of Man of No Importance, music by Stephen Flaherty and lyrics by Lynn Ahrens, the main character Alfie, a gay man in 1960s Dublin, realizes that the advice he's giving a friend, you just have to love who you love, is very fitting advice for his own life. And so he begins his journey of self-acceptance. <laughs> Time has come in our service that we set aside for spiritual practices. One of the ways that we live out our Unitarian Universalist faith is in sharing our joys and sorrows with our community. For this part of the service, we do stop recording in the interest of privacy. 
I'd like to share this prayer with you by Reverend Wayne Arneson. We join together now in a time of prayer and reflection, spoken at first, and then for a time in the peace that silence brings. As we enter into the silence, we remember the many connections that sustain and uplift us through this religious community. We remember those who preceded us, whose contributions built a free faith, who built this home for its practice. We remember those around us, whose continuing care and thought and deed is an ongoing blessing in our lives, keeping the dream of free religion alive in our time. We remember those who will follow us, the children presently in our care, and those yet not come to light, who will inherit the work of our hands and hearts. In the silence now, we sit surrounded by those many connections, visible and invisible, that remind us every day we are not alone. Peace be with us and with all under the sun. Morning's story for all ages is about the true origins of Daffodil Sunday. At the beginning of every service, you may have heard a reminder of BOC's commitment to social justice, including our status as a capital W welcoming congregation, which means we've made changes in the way we do things so we can be intentionally welcoming and fully inclusive of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer individuals and their families. This story starts 27 years ago in 1994, when members of this congregation set out to learn and reflect about ways they could make BUC a more welcoming place for LGBTQ plus people. After a long process, they wrote down commitments and action items like changing the language in church programs and publications to be inclusive and following the leadership of LGBTQ plus members and hosting rites of passage like services of union, dedications of children, and gender affirming ceremonies. This status as a capital W welcoming congregation is not just something we say at the beginning of each service, it's something this community has been actively living at least since 1994 and probably before. 
Now, the members of BUC didn't want this to be a quiet commitment to being welcoming. They wanted to tell the whole world that this community is one where everyone belongs. That way, LGBTQ plus folks who were searching for a church to call their own could know that BUC is a hate-free space. But also making this commitment publicly was a promise, not just to the church community, but to everyone out there that BUC will continue supporting and fighting for LGBTQ plus rights. And so in October of 1994, BUC members wrapped the entire church building in caution tape. It was bright yellow and eye catching and it certainly helped get the word out. In fact, the Detroit Free Press even wrote an article about this UU Church's commitment to making changes to be better welcoming to LGBTQ plus people. And that bright yellow caution tape some, caught someone else's eye too, a gay couple who lived in the apartments behind BUC. Those neighbors were alarmed by this caution tape, which is not often used for happy reasons. So they checked in to find out what that was all about and to ask, whether the church community was okay. They were relieved to learn that the yellow tape was not marking a crime scene, but actually marking a special space. That tape was marking Birmingham Unitarian Church as an, an, an intentionally welcoming, hate-free space. Instead of keep yourself out, the yellow tape meant you are welcome here because we have worked hard to keep hate out. That gay couple from the apartments nearby, people who knew firsthand how much it hurts to be hated for daring to love, they were so touched by this that they went out, maybe at night, maybe with their flashlights, and they prepared a secret surprise, a BUC miracle that lay in wait to sprout in the woods the next year. And when the spring came in 1995, BUC members were greeted by thousands of daffodils that most definitely had not been there the year before. This was the gift that the neighbors gave, a symbol of their appreciation for the transformative work this community did to become a welcoming congregation. I love that bright living flowers have become the symbol of BUC's work for LGBTQ plus folks because daffodils cannot exist on their own without help. They need sunshine and soil and water and occasionally a little human assistance. And in the exact same way, BUC's status as a welcoming congregation takes work. And we are so up for the challenge of helping it bloom for years to come. Our announcement at the beginning of each service that we're a welcoming congregation is a reminder that this story I'm telling today is still being written. Just like all good stories, there will be amazing chapters where we get it right and sad chapters where our community falls short of the commitments to being truly welcoming. This is the story of Daffodil Sunday, a celebration of the beautiful daffodils, the lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer people, the people like me who use one of the many, many other labels, the people who grace our community, the folks claiming their identities and their wholeness, their partners and their pronouns and the glory of being. You are welcome here. Instead of closing the story with the end, I'll put a bookmark in the story now, a bookmark that comes with a commitment that this community will continue growing and blooming like those miracle daffodils, living out our welcoming congregation work in everything that we do. What drew me to Unitarian Universalism is its heart and its spirit as a beacon of liberal religious values. I was married in this church. I raised my children in this church. This is where my head and heart come together, whether it is at coffee hour, worship, or committee work. I love this church that is embodied in its people. Again, what Reverend Margaret Weiss said, the church is the gathering together of all people and experiences and fear and love and hope in our resilient hearts. Gathering however we can to say to the world, welcome, 
Come in, lay down your heartache and pick up hope and love. That is what is at the heart of Daffodil, Sto the Daffodil Sunday story. All are welcome here. As Nico told us in the story for all ages, it was the dedication of our church members who wanted to affirm and promote our seven principles by living out our faith publicly, wrapping the church in yellow tape to say we were a safe place for gays, lesbians, bisexuals, transgenders, and queer individuals and their families. We were, a welcoming we were granted welcoming congregation status by the UUA. The question then becomes, is it an award we put on a shelf and refer to in our opening words, or is it a call to action? The Unitarian Universalist Association must understand this and now asks that congregations renew their welcoming congregation status. BUC did the work to renew last year led by a dedicated group of congregants and they have my gratitude for making that happen. If you look at our seven principles, we are told that they are not dogma or doctrine, rather a guide for those of us who choose to join and participate in UU religious communities. There's also a preamble to the seven principles that says, we need to affirm and promote. It doesn't say believe, it says affirm and promote, which are words that call us to action. So that means our first principle is telling us to affirm and promote the worth and dignity of every person by our actions. What do we need to work on now to keep the meaning of being a welcoming congregation as that call to action? Before BUC closed to in-person services, the welcoming congregation renewal team were working to educate us about preferred pronouns also referred to as personal pronouns. It is very straightforward. Every person wants to be called by the pronouns that show the world how they see themselves and how they want others to see them. With the distance that the shutdown has created, we've lost momentum on this practice of being kind and honoring others' dignity. My parents had three daughters. Margaret, Janet, and myself, Teresa. We were never Maggie, Jan, and Terry. My mother was adamant that people use our full names and that no one had the right to nickname us. I did have a teacher in elementary school who called me Terry. I ignored her when she called me using that nickname. I was told not to be rude but I knew that was not who I was and that the teacher was not going to move that rock. So you can see that for us, you use using someone's preferred pronouns is not about grammar. It is about see, being seen, seeing and being seen. It is about being acknowledged as our whole true selves. When we don't make the effort to learn about preferred pronouns or practice using them, you must know it hurts deeply. And more than that, it makes them feel unsafe. That is not who we are as Unitarian Universalists. We need to live up to the words on the UUA Welcoming Congregation website. All of who you are is sacred. All of who you are is welcome. I am Nate Shrek, I use he, him pronouns, and I am a member of the BUC High School Youth Group, Goosh. In regards to pronouns, Goosh has made it a top priority to be accepting of all identities and genders. We identify our pronouns in the beginning of each meeting and call our peers back into covenant by using the correct pronouns. We had a class in the beginning of the year discussing pronouns and gender identity. It helped us to come to an understanding about pronoun usage and respect amongst our group. Although we have continued this work in high school, the groundwork was laid as early as eighth grade during our 
during the Our Whole Lives program, also known as OWL. As Unitarian Universalists, this concept made sense. It fits with our values seamlessly. They, them pronouns can be used as a first person singular pronoun. The youth have identified several strategies to recognize correct pronoun usage, including slowing down your speech to be more conscious of what you are saying, practicing using they, them pronouns, and identifying your pronouns as much as possible when meeting new people. My community at BUC is a safe space for people of all gender identities. Other places for youth often are not. In school, pronouns are not as big of a topic of discussion, and I don't know the pronouns of many of my peers. Teachers often won't use gender neutral language, and their non and non-binary gender identities are not always understood among both students and teachers. While two of my teachers asked for pronouns in the beginning of the year, that leaves four more who didn't. There is no gay straight alliance at my school. There has not been a pride celebration and our counselors are not often trained to deal with gender identity questions. Depression rates among LGBTQ plus teens are much higher than their cisgender and heterosexual counterparts. And many people face bullying or lack acceptance for the, from their family. This highlights the importance of GUSH and BUC as a whole in respecting people's gender identities and pronouns. It is part of our mission as Unitarian Universalists to provide a spiritual and safe space for all people, regardless of gender identity. We all need to work hard to make sure that we are welcoming everyone because some people might not have that support anywhere else. Introducing yourself with your pronouns, asking others their pronouns, and being consistent in your usage of those pronouns are all achievable steps towards building a safer community. Your words are manageable yet meaningful. One of the agreements in Gush's covenant reminds us to leave room for growth and change. Through our religion and community, it is our responsibility to leave room for growth and change. Being a good ally means being open to growth and change, something of which we are all capable. I'm Amy Smalley, and I use they, them pronouns. The growth and change that led to that decision is what I would like to share this morning. Science has shown that biological sex and gender are a complex mix of genetics, neurobiology, and endocrinology. As the saying goes, it's complicated. Who each of us is at our core is elemental, pure, and complicated, just like our unique journeys. My own journey took an unforeseen turn two years ago. I've been out for decades, opting to be matter of fact about my sexual orientation and long-term relationship, now marriage, with Cindy. And I assumed that many of my personal preferences were just part of being gay. Then I learned about non-binary gender identification and I had an aha moment. Clues from my past stepped forward into focus. My discomfort with puberty, my unwillingness to conform to what society told me I should want to look and act like, my inability to sing either natural woman or nothing like a dame years ago when our choir Sunday theme was battle of the sexes. I wanted simply to be a person, neither female nor feminine, neither male nor masculine. Realizing I was non-binary was a second easier coming out. I spent two months though, deciding on my personal pronouns. I brought home stickers and buttons from the membership table and made multiple versions of my name tag. The morning of BUC's pride service, I got up and put the they, them, their sticker on my name tag and the they, them, their button on my coat. And I felt truly settled and comfortable. I was home. I still have to work at honoring others' personal pronouns and I make mistakes. When I do, I apologize and correct myself. Many of you have known me for years as a she, 
and that may make it more challenging to use my new pronouns. But when friends do, when I hear a they that refers to me, it warms my heart and deepens my connection to the person who made the effort to respect me that way. It affirms my worth and dignity in our beloved community. Each of you contributes to making BUC a place where I and other members of the LGBTQ plus community feel welcome, safe, and at home. Please, let's keep working to deepen that welcome by learning to honor personal pronouns. I assure you it matters, and I believe it's an essential part of putting our Daffodil Sunday story into practice. Thank you. And now let's go ahead and join in song. We're going to sing number 1008, When Our Heart is in a Holy Place. into this spring day and look for the daffodils lifting their faces to the sun, symbols of the work we have done and will continue to do in support of justice for the LGBTQ plus community. Go with joy, go with hope, and go in faith. Blessed be. <laughs> 